In this presentation, we'll look in more depth at how you can use an interactive voice response, an IVR system, to collect data and disseminate information. First, here's a short recap of what we learned in the previous lessons. IVR calls, also known as robocalls, are calls operated automatically by an automated telephony system. This manages the interaction with the respondents, the people who call in, and records all the answers they submit using their keypad. The system can also record voice messages from the respondents. All answers are saved automatically in a spreadsheet. An IVR call can be represented visually through a call flow, which is basically a roadmap of how calls are handled by the system from start to finish. It includes the rules that define how a call should behave depending on a respondent's input. The image you see here has been taken from Verboice, an open source software we use to create our IVR calls. Here, each box represents a call step. Each call step contains a recorded message and has different functions. In this example, respondents will first hear the introduction call step and then the consent call step, which asks the respondent whether they'd like to participate in the survey. If the respondent agrees to participate by pressing one on their keypad, they'll be led to the thanks, let's begin call step. After this, they go on to the survey questions that follow such as age, gender of the head of household, and so on. If the respondent doesn't want to take part and selects two, they'll be led to thanks anyway, call step, and the call will end automatically. For more information on how the voice works, please refer to the additional materials that are available. But why do we use IVR? Firstly, IVR allows for 24-hour data collection seven days a week, even during evenings or weekends when operators are not present, but many people prefer to participate in surveys. Second, they're more cost-effective than CATI, as you don't need to hire extra operators when increasing the sample size and frequency. Third, they have a fast turnaround time as more phone calls can be conducted simultaneously. Fourthly, the data entry tool is automated, so there's no need to man manually enter the data in a data entry tool. Finally, unlike SMS, IVR also works in environments where literacy rates are low, allowing us to reach out to vulnerable populations. Using IVR also has some challenges. When we deployed IVR surveys during the Ebola crisis, we noticed that the data collected through IVR requires a lot of cleaning and it presents high variance. As an example, say a respondent makes a mistake keying in the answer on the phone's keypad. There's no simple way for them to see their answer and correct it. The only way around this is asking them to confirm their answer after every response, which would make the call really long. In contrast, when using SMS, people can easily review their answer before sending it. IVR is also a new technology for many people, and they might need sensitization or extra time before being able to use it. Where we've had success with IVR, it's been after carefully introducing the tool. As the pace of the IVR survey can't be tailored to each respondent, the call could be too fast for some people and too slow for others. With SMS and CATI, respondents can take time to think about their answer before replying. Finally, like SMS, with IVR it's not easy to rephrase questions to ensure that respondents understand their meaning. In contrast, operators can restate, rephrase or explain a question that's not clear to the respondent during CATI surveys. If you decide to use IVR for collecting data, remember to keep questions and answers extremely simple and consider organising sensitisation sessions with respondents. At WFP, IVR is mainly used to disseminate information through a two-way communication system rather than to gather information from respondents. Through the two-way communication system, people can also contact WFP. Callers are redirected to an IVR call flow with a menu of information available in the system. They can select what information they want to listen to by using the numbers on their phone keypad. The system then plays back the messages they've selected. We'll talk more about the two-way communication system later on in the course. In the meantime, please note that all the technical information provided in this IVR tutorial applies to both IVR surveys and IVR two-way communication systems. We'll now look at different options for deploying an IVR system, whether it will be hosted in-house, 
This means that the entire process is managed in-house by your office, which also hosts the gateway. Outsourced, which means that the process is completely outsourced to an external service provider. Or a mix of the two. When the process is managed by your office, but the calls are sent out using gateways hosted by mobile network operators, MNOs. Understanding the various IVR deployment options is important because the setup process is different for each of them. Let's look at each option in more detail. First, in-house deployments. For an in-house deployment, you need to procure your own hardware and software. In terms of hardware, you need the 2N Voice Blue Gateway and a VOIP interface, a dedicated PC, local SIM cards, two or four, depending on the Voice Blue model, and a professional recorder. This is used to record the IVR messages. Alternatively, you can record your messages in a recording studio. Then, you need a piece of software, an interface for creating your IVR system. At MVAM, we use Voice, an open source software developed by Instead as an interface to create our call flows. Finally, bear in mind that for in-house deployments, you need to have the phone numbers of the people you wish to contact. So, how do these devices work together in the IVR system? Let's look first at how the process is managed in-house. First of all, the voice has to be installed on a local server and connected to the 2N Voice Blue Gateway. This is a modem that hosts the SIM cards used to make and receive the calls. You insert the SIM cards in the modem. The SIM cards can be from different carriers, which could reduce costs, as the machine can be programmed to avoid cross-carrier calls. Through for voice, you can design your surveys, upload your recordings and the list of phone numbers to call, and download the results of your survey in CSV format. Now, let's look at outsourced deployments. If you want to outsource your IVR activities, you need to contract an external service provider. In this case, you won't need to procure hardware or use a web interface as the provider will take care of the entire process, apart from designing the questionnaire and recording the files. You'll just need to provide them with the survey questionnaire, including the rules defining your call flow and the recordings and specify your target population, target areas, and timeline. The service provider then provides the gateway and has access to a phone number database. It also does the survey coding and manages the entire data collection process. It will then send the final data set to your organization. A growing number of private providers offer IVR services. For two-way communication systems, completely outsourcing the process is not recommended, particularly when it includes a complaints and feedback mechanism due to privacy and security reasons. Also, for a complaint or feedback mechanism, it's essential for you to be able to review the results and listen to respondent messages every day. Finally, let's now look at mixed systems. With this term, we refer to systems where the process is managed in-house, but the calls are made using either external MNO gateways or with providers of virtual phone numbers, such as Twilio. For MNO gateways, you need to procure multiple toll-free numbers from the MNOs in the country, or procure a toll-free number shared among all MNOs. Then, the MNO infrastructure needs to be integrated into the voice. The process of procuring a toll-free number is different in each country, and in some countries it can be lengthy. For voice over IP, VOIP gateways, you need to procure a virtual phone number. This can be done through some online providers, for example Twilio. This virtual phone number then needs to be integrated into the voice. This is a very easy process, clearly explained in the voice tutorial available on YouTube. The main limitation with this option is that for almost all African countries, virtual numbers are not yet available. This is a visualization of how the mix system would work. Your web interface is still the voice. However, instead of being connected to the 2N voice blue gateway, as within in-house deployments, the voice is directly connected to MNO gateways, using either a toll-free number brought from the MNOs themselves or through a virtual phone number in this case, the voice doesn't need to be installed on a local server. Instead, it can be hosted on the cloud or at verboice.instead.org. The data is recorded and ready to download in real time from the voice. So, what should you do to set up an IVR system? 
For in-house and mixed deployments, the first step is setting up the gateway and integrating it with the IVR web interface, the voice. For outsourced deployments, the first step is contracting an external service provider. For all types of deployment, the second and third steps are creating a questionnaire or the information messages in the local language, designing the call flow and recording the voice files. The fourth step for in-house and mixed deployments is to set up the call flow in the voice and upload the recordings. For outsourced deployments, the fourth step is simply to submit the questionnaire or informative messages call flow and recordings to the external provider. At this point, after testing that the call flow works properly, you can start the actual calls. If the system is deployed in-house or mixed, you need to place the calls yourself. If the system is outsourced, the calls will be placed by the service provider. The final step is to download your results from the voice for in-house or mixed deployments, or wait to receive the results from the service provider if the deployment is outsourced. You're then ready to start your analysis. Thank you for watching this introduction to interactive voice response surveys.